Today we're going to be taking a look at this, the Nano RX from Beta FPV for Express LRS. Now, we did a video a couple of days ago taking a look at their new RF module, which is the one I've got here in the back of my Mambo. And if you're interested in that, I'll put a link to it in the description. But today we're going to concentrate on the Nano RX and take a look at this in a bit more detail. If you haven't seen my other videos I've been doing on Express LRS, we've been taking a look at some modules and working our way through a number of receivers. And we're going to do the same today and have a closer look at this one from Beta FPV. What we'll do is we'll take a look at what you get in the pack. We'll get it under the microscope, have a closer look at what the build quality of the receiver is like. And then at the end, and I will give you some thoughts. Now, this one is a bit different to some of the other receivers that I've checked already because this one has a built-in power amplifier for the telemetry feature. If you don't know what I mean by that, the standard Express LRS modules use the power output from the main chipset for the telemetry signal to transmit back to the module. However, that is much lower power than you get on the transmitter side, for instance, and it is limited, I think, to around 17 milliwatts on most receivers. However, this one has a built-in power amplifier on the telemetry side, which means it's able to push the output further on the link, which should give you better range overall on the performance of the system. So, Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's take a closer look at this receiver and have a look at what it's like. Okay, so taking a closer look at this nano receiver itself. Now this one is a 2.4 gig receiver. Size is about 12 mil by 19 mil and it weighs just 0.7 grams on its own. When you get it in the pack, you will find the receiver itself. You get a couple of pieces of heat shrink tubing, a little wiring harness. You do get a couple of actual connections as well to solder on the PCB if you want to. They fell out just now. And then you get the little manual for it too. Now, as I've mentioned, this one is a 2.4 gig receiver and it has that extra power amplifier for the telemetry output as well. And that allows up to 100 milliwatts of power on the telemetry side going back to your TX module, allowing you to get a better range than you may get on some of the other standard receivers. Now, this one isn't the smallest receiver. As I've said, it is 12 mil by nine mil, but it certainly isn't massive. It's on a size scale around the same as the Crossfire modules or the Tracer modules. So overall, it's on par with them, but it's not quite as small as those very, very small ones like the Flywoo and the other ones that we've looked at too. Now, overall, looking at it out the box, first of all, I don't see any issues at all. Everything looks okay. You can see the main chipset is hidden under a sticker and we've got our little Wi-Fi antenna located here, which is a ceramic antenna for it to allow it to do the over the ear Wi-Fi firmware updates as well. So we've got it under the microscope and now we can take a closer look at what the build quality is actually like. Now on this side here, we've got our main chipset, which is our Express LRS compatible chipset. It does have a sticker over the top, but if we just try and peel this off out of the way, there we go. You can see it's the ESP8285, uh, which is exactly what we would expect to find under one of these. We then have our voltage regulator here is what I would say that is. We then have our components. We have a button located over here, which beta FPV say can be used for firmware updates or binding with their own custom version of firmware, but that isn't on the standard Express LRS firmware, and we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. We have a ceramic antenna for the Wi-Fi update functionality, rather than having a PCB trace. And we've got all of the other components located over the board with the real-time clock up there. If we spin it over to the other side and take a look what we've got on this side of the PCB, we have again our 1280 chipset. We have our clock. We have various other components. And then up here, we have our low noise power amplifier, which is for that additional power output and RX telemetry output from the system. So rather than having a standard amplifier, we've got the larger amplifier that allows up to that 100 milliwatt output for that telemetry. 
and then we've got our filter with our connector for our antenna up here which is ufl now if we just jump in a little bit closer and take a look around the board just to see how it's been manufactured overall everything looks okay components look fairly straight there is the odd one which is slightly misaligned but nothing shocking at all certainly nothing i'm concerned about just looking down that side of the pcb there ignore that bit of damage there around that pin that was actually me. One of my wires got caught and pulled off when I was actually doing a power test with it. I caused that because you can see we soldered on there. So that, that's nothing to do with beta FPV. We've then got our clock. And yeah, everything looks okay on that. If we have a look at the soldering on the QFN, that all looks fine. No concerns there at all. Everything looks as I would expect it to be. If we pop over to the other side of the PCB, we can start up in the top corner where we've got our ceramic antenna for the Wi-Fi. We've got the rest of our components, our LED and our button. Again, resistors, resistors, capacitors. Again, all look fine. Build quality looks good. Nothing I'm concerned about at all so far. Coming down around there. Yeah everything looks fine and then again if we just have a quick look at the qfn just to see how the balls look everything looks fine oh we did have a solder ball we found a solder ball always and another one there look a couple on here as well look a couple of little solder balls up here on these pins but nothing phenomenal. A couple down here too. If you don't know what solder balls are, they're the remnants, little balls of solder after manufacturing, but they can cause problems and they can cause shorts between pins on stuff. And what it usually just is a sign of is that the PCB hasn't been fully clean after the manufacturing process. The board doesn't look dirty. You can just see there's another one there, look, hiding down by there. Um, you can just see these things sometimes between the components. As long as they're not too big, it's nothing to worry about. Overall, I have to say the quality of the PCB looks decent. And again, everything looks fine. No concerns whatsoever. Now, something I just do want to mention is around this ceramic Wi-Fi antenna. This is the antenna that allows you to upgrade the firmware via the Wi-Fi functionality in the ESP. Something I did note when I was doing the firmware upgrade on this device is the range on this Wi-Fi is quite a bit less than the range on a couple of my other Express LRS modules. I ended up having to put the Wi-Fi adapter that I use basically right next to it. It isn't a major issue. It isn't something I would call a problem, but it just was an observation I made whilst doing the firmware updates. Okay, so um, to give you my thoughts on this Express LRS receiver from Beta FPV. Now, I have been testing this one on an aircraft. It has been flown, found no problems with it whatsoever. Haven't done any out and out range tests because that frankly isn't the kind of testing I generally do. What I can say is I've seen no issues with it at all. Overall, the quality of the module is good and the antenna quality is decent as well. A little bit better than some of the others that I've seen included with modules too. It's nice to have a board with that additional amplifier, which does give you that 100 milliwatts of output rather than that much lower output on the telemetry that you get on the standard modules. But to be fair, people still get really good range on those standard modules, let alone these. What I would say is for the cost, it is available on the Beta FPV website for about $17. It is absolutely worth a look, although I would be running it with the main branch of Express LRS firmware and not the custom versions from Beta FPV. Personally, I prefer to run the main version as I discussed talking about this module as well, because whilst there is some additional functionality on this module when using the Beta FPV fork, there are some quirks to it as well. So with this receiver, I would recommend you do run the main branch, which is version 1.2 as of today, but we've got 2.0 around the corner, which won't be too far off as well. Overall, nothing 
to complain about. Quality is good, couple of slight misaligned components, but certainly nothing compared to one or two of the early modules that I checked. So if you're looking to get yourself a receiver with the amplifier for the telemetry, this one from Beta FPV is well worth a look. Now, as I mentioned at the start, they did send me this one for free. However, they haven't seen this video before it's been published and the fact that they've sent it to me for free has no influence on my opinions. If you'd like to support the channel to enable us to keep making content like this, please do check out our a Patreon account. There is a link to it in the description. If you'd like to support us on an individual basis, you can do that via Buy Me A Coffee as well. Furthermore, if you found it interesting, please give it a like. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And there is also a link to my Discord server in the description of the video as well if you want to come over, ask some questions and say hi.